We are in Milan, the capital of Lombardy region and the second most populous city in Italy after Rome. In the Renaissance period, Milan was a large city with extensive territory and it was rich. We are now in front of the one of the main tourist attractions of Milan, the Castello Sforzesco, which was built by Francesco Sforza, the Duke of Milan on the remnants of a 14th century fortification. Extensively rebuilt in the 19th century, it now houses several of the city's museums and art collections. Now let's have a look inside the Castello Sforzesco in the center of Milan. The central tower of the castle is dedicated to King Umberto I, who was assassinated five years earlier. The central tower is designed and decorated by the sculptor and architect Filarete, so the tower is named after him, Torre del Filarete. At the top of the tower is the statue of San Ambrogio by the sculptor Luigi Secchi in late 14th century style. San Ambrogio is the patron saint of Milan. The Sforza Castle is one of the largest architectural complexes in Europe. It was built as a military fortification but also as a residence for the Duke of Milan. Francesco Sforza, the Duke of Milan who reconstructed this castle, also modernized Milan, created an efficient system of taxation, and made Milan to become a center of Renaissance culture. He was a moderate and skillful ruler, so the people of Milan grew to love him. This is the statue of Giuseppe Garibaldi. He was an Italian general, politician, and nationalist who played a large role in the history of Italy.
The Swarza Castle accommodates a number of museums of fine art, decorative arts, and history located on four levels. This elegant courtyard is called the Duke Courtyard. In the Renaissance period, Milan was a large city with extensive territory, and it was rich. Ludovico Sforza, the Duke of Milan from 1494 to 1499, the fourth son of Francesco Sforza, made Milan the most splendid country in Europe with patronage of artists and scholars. Leonardo da Vinci and the architect Donato Bramante were among the many artists, poets, and musicians who gathered in Milan. Leonardo da Vinci painted the frescoed ceiling of the Sforza Castle, combining a naturalist depiction with a strong symbolism. Leonardo painted a very precise detail of the mulberry tree. In the past, this moat seems to be underwater to provide a preliminary line of defense to the fortification.
Sforza built castle. Milan became prosperous. Fantastic till now. Milan is a cosmopolitan home to Italy's business centers. The city is stylish and is the world's design capital, which rivals Paris as a leading fashion center. Theater and cinema flourish in this fashionable city. Milan has a long history of monuments, museums, and churches. It sets one of the finest in Italy, featuring art by Michelangelo with his final sculpture, and Leonardo da Vinci with his Last Supper. Just a few minutes walk from the Milan Duomo, there is a square called Piazza Mercanti or Market Square. 
The square dates back to the 12th and 13th centuries and was once the commercial center of the city. Various traders such as bakers, cobblers, and tailors would conduct their business here. Several magnificent buildings surround the square, including two that were built in the 13th century, the Palazzo dei Giure Consulti and the Palazzo della Ragione. The square is well worth a visit as these two buildings in particular will make you feel as though you have stepped back in time. This is what medieval Milan actually looked like. Adjacent to the Sforza Castle, there is a large park named Sempiona Park. It has an overall area of 38 hectares, designed by the architect Emilio Alemania. The park is nicely laid out in a landscape style with winding paths, open grassy areas, tall trees, and a picturesque bridge across a central pond. The Sempione Park was established in the 17th century, filled with oak and chestnut trees as well as exotic animals. After the Spaniards conquered Milan, the park was converted to crops. Later, under Napoleon's rule, the park was once again converted to its original use and given back to the locals. After World War II, a real estate company lobbied the conversion of the park to residential buildings. However, a strong opposition from the local population allowed this park to be preserved the way we see it today.